ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me, Nox Longbows. Welcome to the channel and welcome to another guide. In this guide, we're going to be taking a look at a budget preset for ED2 and see how well it fares inside of the dungeon. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into this guide. So real quickly, before we get into this worn equipment, I just noticed that I accidentally left my T90 shield in there from a different setup that I was testing from earlier. Uh, completely omit that T90 shield, it's not part of the preset. And for those of you who want to copy this preset, you now have an extra inventory space to bring something else that you might find useful. Taking a quick look at this preset, it is pretty basic in nature, but what it may lack in simplicity, it more than makes up in damage. Being that an ED2, well, you're killing a bunch of dragons, and the Jazz Dragonbane arrows give you 30% damage extra against dragons, and also 20% accuracy as well. Now, the other two arrow types I've included are Splintering Arrows for non-dragon targets, you know, ones that can't really take advantage of the 30%, because they're a fun, cheap arrow to use, and if you use a Dazing Shot before a Rapid Fire, you can usually get a pretty good Salt the Wound off with these arrows, so it's always a nice backup arrow as well. And the reason I included these over something like when arrows is they're about uh, at time of recording 800 gp each compared to when arrows being about 2.5k each so if you're worried about arrow costs or things like that then splintering arrows are definitely a cheap alternative to consider trying out now the arrows next to that are the death spore arrows which when stacks are built up with death spore arrows it allows you to save all of your adrenaline from a death swift and get an incendiary shot off afterwards which subsequently allows you every time you crit in a death swiftness to get 10 percent a additional adrenaline, and so once using something like Reaver's Ring and Calgarian Demon, this can become pretty helpful in getting off a second Debo in your Death Swift rotation. Now I will make note that even with Calg and Reaver's Ring, getting Death Spore stacks does take a little while unless you get very lucky, and being that Grim is only another 280 to 300 mil in cost, it is highly worthwhile just for Death Spore arrows in general. So if you get lucky on a double codex throughout your dungeon runs, consider picking one up as well to make this preset a lot nicer and much more usable, as well as Gricko will make life a lot easier with Karoming 4 on your bow to in order to get crits because it is 7 hits in one global cooldown, so more, you're more likely to crit there per ability, obviously. However, for this guide, I have omitted Gricko and Grimoire just for the cost associated with both. However, with running the dungeon for a little while, you should be able to build up the cash for both of those and the other special attacks because ED2 surprisingly is good GP per hour. The Draconic Energy has gone up to about 600k each at time of recording, and all of the codexes are at least, uh, you know, 67 70 mil for Flurry, and the other two, I think, are almost at the 200 mil mark, and they can double when you get them. The overall ED2 GP per hour is right up there with ED1, and it is better than ED3, so honestly, it is a pretty good dungeon for anyone looking to make some more GP than something like God Wars 2. This is a very straightforward dungeon to get into and start farming. Now, as far as the rest of the preset is concerned, the Dark Bow is just there as a shield swap. Honestly, I don't really use shield too much throughout this dungeon, but I know some people like to have have the extra security feeling of having some type of shield for reses or reflex or anything like that. So I went ahead and put it in there. And the offhand glaive is just to assist chins while not requiring any bolts to use. Now if you have ascension crossbows and you have a couple of pernix quivers lying around, feel free to bring those as well, as the occasional hydrix proc on needle strike will be helpful and also more damage is always welcome when chinning. However, chins with an offhand glaive will do more than enough damage for dungeon runs here. The rest of the preset is pretty self-explanatory. The crystal daggers there are just for bladed dive in case you don't have the puzzle box upgraded. Uh, the food is just regular brews and blue blubbers. Brews are only around 20k each and blubbers are pretty cheap themselves. And the main benefit of using blubbers over something like a solid food is that it does not drain your adrenaline and when you're dealing with something like and when you're dealing with a range setup that's not quite best in slot, adrenaline can be kind of hard to come by especially when using bows because because crossbows obviously have hydrix bolts and can get a lot of adrenaline that way, but bows right now don't really have anything like that, so you have to go with something like Death Spore and Incendiary Shot. And so if you're having to eat a little bit of food during any of those little build periods, it's going to make life a lot more difficult, and it's just going to like kind of snowball into the future of the kill and cause things to kind of 
go haywire, so I just recommend using blue blubbers and brews. You heal 1800 per eat, and you can eat every other game tick when you combo blue blubber and brew. Now, the reason the blue blubber is healing 1800 per eat is because there is expensive spices in there. I just went ahead and threw that in there for uh, just kind of for funsies because I didn't really have anything else to put in its place, and the extra little heals on the blue blubbers is always nice. Vuln bombs are there for the bosses and any of the trash mobs that you remember to throw them on, and the rune pouches are just there for disrupt shield and vengeance. Now, if you don't have these spells, uh, you can just do livid farm to get the disrupt shield, and you can also buy livid plants from the merchant to help get disrupt shield faster. And disrupt shield comes in handy for quite a lot of places, mostly a uh, Verac Lith. I find myself using it there the most for blocking some of the attacks, but if not, you can simply use debilitate to help mitigate damage there as well if you don't have it. But I do recommend getting disrupt shield if you don't have it other than that it's just a adrenaline renewal potion and an overload and the yellow power burst is just a power burst of accelerations to kind of zoom through parts of the dungeon a little bit faster than just running through it i went in and used super restores just for a simple prayer gain normally i would just toss my blessed flask in here but i understand that not everyone has blessed flask and it's kind of low on the priority list so for the preset example sake i went ahead and toss super restores in here being that we'll be using calgarian demon and you don't need spiritual prayers for Cal Calgarian Demon to work effectively. The EOF just has a Dark Bow in it, there is nothing fancy there. The Luck of the Dwarves is just for the mitigation of getting a Cheese and Tomato Bottle on the Trash Mobs. Now being that I accidentally left the T90 Shield in here, you could easily replace that with uh, Lucky Charms if you wanted to bring those, or you could even cut down a Super Restore if you were looking for space that way and put the charms in that place. And Scripture of When is a pretty cheap pocket slot, I believe it's anywhere from 80 to 100 mil, so it's about the same cost as your Cinder your Luck of the Dwarves, and your Reaver's Ring. It's all kind of in that price range, maybe a little bit more, depending on current market price. But the upkeep per hour is something like 200k an hour, so it's a very cheap book to use once you have it, and very much worthwhile for the AoE damage it offers. And the regular T90 Serenic, um, it is dirt cheap right now. At time of recording, it's 10 mil. It is 10 mil for the armor set. Like, all said and done, 10 mil cost because when Zami came out obviously the ceramic scales were abundant there and they got nerfed after a while but that little period in time caused ceramic scales to just get mass dumped into the economy and they're very cheap now so t90 ceramic armor even though it degrades fairly quickly inside of elite dungeon 2 it's more than worthwhile to use here being it is so cheap for such good armor last but not least i do have the hybrid cape in here it is just because uh, the hybrid zuck cape is the one that i have however if you just have the regular uh, normal mode range cape that is perfectly fine as it does the same thing as the hybrid cape it's uh, i believe it's the same stats and the same effect um it's just only for the range style but since we're camping one combat style anyways it's not going to matter too much so just use whichever one you have as far as perks are concerned on the top i just have c4 r5 and impatient for devoted for those are pretty cheap perks and they're also best in slot for armor so honestly i wouldn't bother wasting time with some of the more uh cheaper alternative perks being that these are relatively cheap in the first place to get. And for the bottom, I have Biting 3 on there just because I know it is cheaper to get, with I believe its direct components is a really cheap way, but if you can get Biting 4, if you can afford Biting 4, definitely go for it. The extra 2% crit chance is very helpful. And the main perk you want on your armor set here is Dragon Slayer. Now, I comboed it with Genocidal just because it's an easy combo, and that one doesn't require any Ancient Gizmos. And 7% damage on Dragons is always nice, and if you're on task, the additional damage from Genocidal will add up as well. Now, as far as the run is concerned, I am not on a dragon task for doing the example run, so if you are on Slayer task, you'll just be doing that much more damage with the Slayer Helm buff on the Anacronia stand, plus Genocidal being incorporated into that damage as well. As far as relics are concerned, they are the bog standard relics that I use pretty much everywhere. They do require 120 archaeology to run this setup, however you could swap out for maybe uh, Berserker Fury instead of Conservation of Energy, or you could drop in uh, maybe Death ward because you don't honestly take a whole lot in this dungeon assuming you're careful with uh, kind of like your movement and some of your rotations and whatnot when dealing with trash mobs as long as you're a little bit careful damage is not too much of a concern here so you could probably drop death ward and maybe replace it with something like font of life or uh, shadows grace if you don't have mobile on something but fury of the small and conservation of energy are the two big hitters in my opinion and the third one is kind of a toss-up so just use what you can anyways though i think that's enough rambling let's go ahead and get into to this example run. Alrighty, we have the budget preset loaded up and ready to go. 
we'll go ahead and enter the dungeon and turn on our book and we're good to go so what i like to do here is surge bladed dive uh, you just press surge bladed dive on that tile and then you're good to go now for this room all you have to kill is four of these original slimes you don't have to kill any of the ones that spawn just four of the original ones and you're good to go so you just use a couple bleeds snap rapid it's going to be kind of a common theme in this dungeon a lot of snaps a lot of rapids and some basic uses with maybe tendies and then what you can do here is just toss on your bow to get the big boy damage from the arrows. Uh, I will probably be using uh, Gricko, but I don't have uh, Chroming on it, so it's not going to be too much of a difference in damage uh, as far as compared to Ricochet is concerned. Gricko really comes alive when uh, once you have Chroming on your bow, but obviously this one's just rocking P6E4, so... Won't be too much of a difference there for those who are wondering. So what I like to do is surge bladed dive over to this tile here. Use rapid fire on that guy. And then here I like to figure out if any of these guys are going to cooperate as far as chins are concerned. Maybe use a basic a snap into a debo. A couple bleeds. Maybe a uh, needle strike and then they're both dead. And then I can just sit here and basic on this guy to build adrenaline for the golems. All right, I like to surge bladed dive over to this tile here in this uh, kind of corner and then just start piling on some bleeds. Then maybe a needle into a Debo. And we got lucky there with the lineup, so they all died. And then I just bladed dive surge over to this corner where the celestial is. Now, rapid fire, uh, binding shot and uh, tight bindings will all stop their healing attack and their healing attack happens right around the um i think it's 37 or 37.5k hp and then i just like to chin the rest of the uh mobs you only have to kill two of them in order to get the gate open after the celestial is dead for these i just like to thresh per usual this one decided to pop after rapid fire, which is fine. You should use basics done. Here, I'm just going to drop a couple bleeds on this guy. And I'll drop a uh, dazing shot for fun. Now, tight bindings is on my dual wield bar. You don't have to use uh, tight bindings on a dual wield bar. It's useful. It, it can be used by any um, weapon, either two hand or dual wield. It's just how I have my bar set up. Go off this last one, then Surge, Bladed Dive over here, and then this one I just like to put a couple bleeds on. And Rapid Fire is off cooldown, so I'll just tend these into a basic, into a Binding Shot, maybe a Snap. Dazing Shot into a Snipe, and that seemed to work. Now I like to Surge, Bladed Dive, and then get Melee Distance on this Celestial here, so that way this one will walk forward and block the other mobs from coming around down here and possibly getting into the boss encounter later on. Alright, so what I like to do here is I'll come into this room and I'll just start with like a couple thresholds, like maybe a snapshot or something. And immediately I'm just going to go ahead and start trying to build Death Spore stacks. Make sure my uh, ring is on, my Calg is working. Because I, I just want to be nice and built up for the start of, or for when the circle is planted. Because once he's below 200k, he goes into a soft cap until you do the whole pulling of the Neutron Star into... Oh, I've got to be mindful of my HP. Uh, until you pull the Neutron Star into this, but then I just like to have a pot and then... With uh, Death Spore, you get a free DS, basically. And then, so you can Incendiary Shot and get Crit Adren. And then just use, like, a Snap, a Rapid. Accidentally press Gricko there, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. Use a couple other abilities. We'll probably use one more Basic here to get another Debo off. And as you can see, I'm getting a lot more Adrenaline just because... Well, during that part, your Crit and Chance, I believe, goes up from the effect of the... Uh, from the circle once you plant the neutron star in it and i also go to the e side there because it usually has like a 50 50 shot of the neutron just instantly spawning on top of the uh little circle that you plant and i also like to plant the circle md so 
It just makes life a lot easier, so you can walk all the way to the east and then uh, not be hit by the attacks when the circle is uh, completely blacked out like you see. It uh, does a lot of damage to you, a lot of typeless. Uh, anyways, enough rambling about the boss. Uh, what I like to do here is click on these steps and then Bleeded Dive Surge in one tick over to this area. And it sometimes skips the spiders, but sometimes it doesn't. And for these two Lava Strikes, I just like to double bleed. So Frag Shot and Corrupt Shot, followed by a Dead Shot. And then just use basic abilities to build back up Adrenaline. Now here what I like to do is Bladed Dive, a pot, Excel Pot to... Uh, I kind of messed it up. Uh, what I normally do there, you will you can find this in my uh, regular range guide. I talk about it there. I'll link that up in the card in the top right corner. But basically, it's bladed dive, and then I reset my bladed dive cooldown with the Excel uh, power burst, and I bladed dive surge, surge, uh, bladed dive, surge, bladed dive around in kind of like a V shape. And then after that, I surge like one or two more times to get over to this tile here. So, uh, tried to explain it and I messed up the inputs, but you know, that happens. Mistakes happen all the time in PVM, so I just gotta send it. Now, if you want to make Death Spore a lot easier to use, uh, like I said in the worn equipment, uh, Grim greatly helps the proc chance of a crit. Uh, it makes life a lot easier when dealing with Death Spore, and you're going to get more crits during your Death Swift, which is going to allow you to drop more uh, Debos and other Threshes and everything else. So, I should probably check my overload. And now for chinning targets, they only really check for the, uh, to the south and to the west on a larger than a one by one target. And that's because the origin tile of a target is actually the southwest corner. It's not in the center of the, uh, NPC. So how that works is like, see how this one here is, has a target directly to the south. That's because the origin tile here is within the distance of the hitbox, or the, yeah, the hitbox of the target below it, so. That's how that works. And obviously, if something, like, a, if a big dragon's to the east, if you attack the west one, the chins aren't gonna work, so. It's just something to keep in mind. It's something, it's kind of janky, but once you get used to it, it's not too big of a deal. Now, what I like to do here is obviously swap over to my splintering arrows because my, uh, uh the Jazz Dragon Bane, while they're good, they do not work on Lava Strikes, so. I'll just threshold these down, maybe use a snipe and a wrap it on this guy. And here, I'll go ahead and use a dead shot, maybe another bleed, and I'll just go ahead and assault the wound for fun. And then just maybe a snapshot and a couple other basics. This one. Swap back to my dragon arrows and continue through the dungeon. Now here, I like to see if I can shin. Sometimes these dragons like to play nice and line up. Sometimes you can get really lucky and get all three of them to line up at once. Like if this one was a little farther north and then this one was more so here. Then you could shin all three on the nor off the northeast one. Surprisingly, this one is chinning. I'm not really sure why that worked, but you know what? We will not complain. Chins are very odd when it comes to targets that will work, because sometimes it looks like something is lined up and it won't work, and then other times it looks like there's no shot in hell, and that it's actually going to work, and then they just end up working. They're, uh, they're interesting to use, I'll say. And this one, I just like to basic keep. Make sure you're at 100% Adren before you go into Varak Lith. So I'll usually just sacrifice a little time there using basics. And what I like to do here is just bank and get some weapon poison. And then maybe some of the other potions as well, like my overload. Uh, mostly just for the weapon poison. The uh, summoning renewal, it's kind of a force of habit from spamming Ripper so much. But you don't actually need it for Cal. That's kind of a waste. Now for Varak, I like to start here. And I like to just start off the fight by trying to build up Death Spore stack. So I'll surge here. 
birds the wrong way, actually. And then we're just going to try and build up. So I'll use a rapid fire, make sure my ring is on, my calg spec is prompt. And we'll just sit here, maybe use a snap rapid. We're already at four, so maybe the basics will play nice. Oh, looks like they're not going to play nice. We'll try here to build up. Finally got a crit, so now we can DS, incendiary shot, go back to our air dragon bane arrows. Use a couple basics, go for a snap with our... I like to use the... Uh, if you have the D-Slayer sigil or ability, whatever it's called at this point, uh, go ahead and use that. This hit, I like to disrupt shield. Into a snap. Or a snipe into a Debo. There's a couple more abilities, and then a second snipe or a snapshot into a basic. And I'll just go ahead and rapid fire the spire. Now, when the spire is up, uh, Varak Lith is immune. There's no point in attacking him, and he actually becomes immune the same tick that uh, the spire is active, even if you may not see the spire. Because the Spire has like a spawn in animation, but that tick that is there, he is immune, so it might feel like you get robbed a couple times of hits, and that's all that's going on. Now I was just doing some damage there, but I'm going to try and build up a Death Spore stacks again, charge up my Calg once again. Go. Maybe see if this rapid fire wants to help out. Give us some death spore stacks. The snapshot. Well, okay, the snapshot did. And I'll just toss a couple bleeds on in that case. Get my free DS into an incendiary. We don't have a pot this time, but it shouldn't matter too much. We get this rapid fire off with our sigil. Probably should have saved it for afterwards, but you know is what it is. We use Snapshot on here with a basic. That should die. Maybe go into a Limitless here in a second. Yeah, we'll Limitless into Attendees. Surge away from that. Attack. And then just Rapid Fire. And he should be dead. There we go. As you can see, the Dragon Bane arrows do a lot of damage for a relatively cheap setup on... Uh, any dragon, so definitely something to consider. Now here, just right-click teleport, option 4, and that'll progress you through the dungeon instead of having to run all the way back down. And then here, we're just going to surge and blade dive and surge again over. Now we'll see which ones like to play. Uh, nice. These two seem to play nice for Chin, so we'll go ahead and take advantage of that. I'm just going to play it safe because I didn't see my overload. Because these ones, when they hit you with their little special attack, they will take away from your overload timer. Uh, the other ones, like the Onyxes here, they just take your health. There's no other thing that they take away from. And then Hydrix steal your Adren. So, just something to keep in mind. But usually, when they spit out their attacks, you only have to move uh, two, two tiles. And you should avoid the attack. Or if, if you move on a any of the cardinal directions, but if you're on a diagonal, I think you have to move three. So, well, these ones want to play nice, so we can go ahead and take advantage of our chins again. And now if you stand melee distance to one of these dragons, they do not use their little uh, ranged attack that saps either HP, uh, anti-fire timer, or adrenaline. And this one still has some HP, so we'll swap over to our Nox bow. Use the arrows to get the rest of the HP down. And we're off. Now here, you can either kill one of these Hydrix dragons, or you can kill the two Dragonstone dragons. It's kind of a preference thing. Um, if you want to, you can use this wall to pull both of those Dragonstone dragons into a Chin spot, and it's technically less HP to worry about because you're only having to do 50k worth and the chin's obviously going to go on the other one but with the introduction of the dragon bane arrows i find it much easier to uh sort of just kill the hydrix because you have a 30 percent multiplier which is kind of hard to uh or a 30 percent damage increase it's hard to argue with that one so 
I do think it is still worth to use chins in this dungeon, even with that being said. But, um... Honestly, you probably could just skip chins and get similar times. See, all I had to do is move tiles away from where I was standing. So I was standing here. That attack came in, and then I just moved two tiles away. And even though it looks like you're on the barrier of it, like right here... Oh, it didn't spawn. But it looks like you're on, like, the line of, you know... You might still get hit by it, but the... You can stand on that line two tiles away from the center, and you'll be fine. So, here, put on my ring... Make sure my cow is charged up. And we're just going to go ahead and try and get Death Spore stacks as soon as possible. And doesn't seem like the air, my crits want to play what nice with me. Oh, they're, they were a little bit. Okay, they're kind of being average. Oh, now they're kind of being mean. Alright, first did it, the rapid fire did it, so I'm just going to run over here. Plant the DS. Do an incendiary shot. And we're off to the races. Tried to pre-phase a little bit more, but it was not worthwhile. And just use the rest of your DS and your thresholds to take out the hands here. If you have Dominion Mines, they work really nicely. But uh, I know they're kind of annoying to make, so I just decided to omit them from this preset. But if you don't mind questing, then I highly recommend bringing Dominion Mines here, because that is 40,000 damage on these hands that you just don't have to do. I think with these, I think they fixed it to where you can just Vuln Bomb them now, and it should work. Yeah, it'll work. So before, you had to, like, right-click and throw next to it, and so that's just a uh, muscle memory I haven't gotten rid of yet. Uh, quick note, you should be on splintering. Don't be on the Dragon Bane arrows for the hands like I was there. Uh, just go ahead and use the splintering. And then what you can do is on these, in between any of these hands, you see where this, uh, this uh, crystal shape is. Where the short end of it is pointing to, this tile is a safe spot. And so what you can do is, once you kill the two hands, you can just walk two tiles to the other direction, and then surge, and you'll land right on this tile. And so, the arms that come out, they'll never hit you. The only thing you have to worry about is the, uh, are the magic hits that fly out, because they do quite a bit of damage. Try and build some Death Spore stacks up on this arm. Doesn't want to quite cooperate. Oh, there we go. Just ask or complain, and stuff happens. Back to our splintering arrow, and go back to our dragon bane arrows once it's dead, and just go for the usual two snaps, two rapids, and attendees. Maybe a debo. Attendees is a guaranteed crit, so you can use that in your favor. going to move over here, just to avoid the fire. Alright, that wasn't a bad rotation, still a little bit of damage to do. I'm just going to drop a Debo and kind of dump here. And during this phase, what I like to do is just kind of stay next to him so he doesn't move as much. Uh, and it makes the phase go a little bit quicker. But you just have to be mindful of the uh, of the fire that's going to be spawning. Because obviously if you're closer, you're going to have less time to react to the fire. But also you can soul split back to full HP here just by attacking. So you can just use basic abilities. And you can just soul split your way all the way back up to full HP. The more that I think about it, honestly, I don't know if Calg and Death Spore is honestly going to be work worth it. The more I think about it. 
I was thinking would be really nice. Like, if you get lucky with crits, it's nice, but it's hard to justify. Being that you're not going to be getting as many crits in general, but it is kind of a method I just wanted to show off. But if you wanted to rip her instead, that would work out pretty well. I'm just going to attend these to get my guaranteed crit. Just gonna go for a standard DS here of, you know, two snaps, two rapids, whatever else you can fit in. I'm just gonna use a Debo here. Get some good damage. And there we go. That is the dungeon complete. So, I am gonna speak for a little bit here on just uh, my overall thoughts of, say, Death Spore usage versus just a more traditional setup with Ripper Demon. So Death Spore is obviously nice for getting a free Death Swiftness, and you can use Incendiary Shot afterwards to then get, ad get additional Adrenaline during your DS. However, as I've been testing this preset, I have also played with Ripper Demon and just using Apot and Limitless type Death Swifts, and I have been getting similar results uh, between the two. Now, the thing to note is with the setup of Calg Demon and Reavers, this is a much cheaper alternative, plus Death Sport arrows themselves are very cheap. They're only 450 GP each, so if you're very budget-minded, this is going to be more so the preset for you. And if you're fine with the more RNG method of not exactly using your Death Swiftness on time or something, waiting kind of for Death Spore stacks to build up, uh, if you really want to be uh, cost-effective about this Pre this dungeon, then I would probably say Death Spore. However, if you just want to send it on damage until you have uh, Gricko with Karoming 4 and a Grim, then I could easily see someone using a Ripper Demon with more traditional Death Swift rotations, like uh, just following the principles of two snaps, two rapids, attendees, maybe a dark bow spec if you happen to get the Adren for it, and kind of going that route. I can see similar times, and honestly, I think the Ripper Demon is probably going to be a little bit faster, and it's going to be more consistent for three runs an hour. Now, in the future, I might do an add-on, just an add-on example run video, uh, and then post it in the description of how I would do a run with Ripper Demon and spirituals and just kind of running a more traditional setup so if you would like to see that uh, just let me know in the comments below and i can easily just uh record an example run or do a one on stream or something like that and just pull the video and then have it linked below as an unlisted video and i can just do it that way so i see both presets the strengths and benefits of both this one is slightly painful to wait for death spore stacks but it is a very cheap alternative because as I said, 450 GP each for these, 780. Now, personally, I'm not one to really care about the cost of materials. I'm just going to use whatever is best, and if it costs a lot, so be it, because most of the uh, bosses in this game will give a lot of GP per hour, and it pretty much balances out, and so I very much follow the philosophy of full send now, ask questions later. However, I do know a few of you out there are quite budget-minded and very much worry about min-maxing your cost compared to your profits, so if that's something you're concerned about, I would definitely look into using Death Spore Arrows for getting free Death Swift as far as your adrenaline is concerned. And Splintering Arrows on their own, I find them very fun to use, especially once you have Gricko with Karoming 4. Uh, using Greater Dazing Shot or MDS as it used to be known as into Gricko, you immediately get 7 stacks and then Salt the Womb becomes a very powerful threshold afterwards. So in 3 abilities you have a very nasty combo as compared to something like Wen Arrow where they're almost 25, 2600 each. Let's see what the cost is. I have them in my preset. Examine 2800 GP each. So if you're really looking to save GP, I would always recommend splintering over when because I find uh, Salt the Wound much more fun to play with and it's co pretty comparable in damage as when arrows themselves, there's a lot to them and I don't really see a lot of benefit with them outside of some very nice rotations. 
uh, that people will tell me about that AODers use, but anywhere else, I don't know of too many rangers really messing with when arrows, unless there's simply just nothing else they can use as far as like accuracy concerns with full, or you can't use uh, big arrow strats because the target might not be poisonable or something, you know, anything along those lines, or you can't use any of the other ones. I would give splintering arrows a shot, and then uh, if you don't like them, feel free to go back to when arrows, but uh, the choice is yours. Anyways, I hope this guide was helpful, and let's go ahead and roll that outro. Ladies, gentlemen, and I did not forget about you, Nox Longbows. Thank you very much for watching. Your viewership is greatly appreciated. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I'll see you next time for the next video. Keep an eye down in the pinned comment below for a unlisted video of the alternate preset run with Ripper Demon and more traditional rotations. Until next time, I'll see you then. Peace.